In a recent Instagram photo, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in excellent shape, it was his first time being seen in public since getting a pacemaker. The Terminator actor had disclosed on his podcast three days prior that, following three open-heart surgeries, he had a pacemaker installed last Monday. In the episode, he said that, similar to his Terminator persona, he now had up a machine part and that he would need to take a break from working out. Now, on Thursday, he shared a photo of himself showing off a joke dynamite timer with the warning, danger, high voltage, affixed to his breast. He thanked his admirers in the caption for their, kind messages, following the news that he had received a pacemaker. The actor from True Liars wrote, Thank you. I've had a ton of kind emails from all around the world, however many have inquired as to whether or not FUBAR season may second interfere with my pacemaker. Not at all. I'll be prepared to shoot in April, and it will only be visible to those who truly seek it out, he joked. He remarked, last Monday, I had surgery to become a little bit more of a machine, I got a pacemaker, on his podcast Arnold's Pump Club, which was released on Monday that I have to admit, stating this to all of you goes against a lot of my Austrian upbringing, where medical matters were seldom discussed. You kept everything about healthcare to yourself, however, I've received a ton of emails and notes from people who, like me, were born with bicuspid aortic valves, informing me that discussing my valve replacement procedures has given them the confidence and hope to handle their own, what option do I have then? Knowing that being open and honest helps people and fighting my natural tendency to be secretive? Arnold declared, first of all, I want you to know I'm doing great, to reassure his followers that he is healing nicely, Monday was my operation day, and by Friday, my friend and fellow fitness advocate Jane Fonda and I were attending a major environmental event. By the way, have a look at Jane when we discuss how exercise is the only anti-aging miracle drug. She turned 87 this year, making her 10 years older than I am. I never would have guessed that I had surgery to start the week that I express my gratitude to the entire Cleveland Clinic team. My entire medical team provided me with exceptional care, ensuring that the procedure went as well as possible. They also told me it was time to follow through on this because my heartbeat was irregular due to scar tissue from my prior surgery, he said that I kept in contact with my medical team and made in-person visits at least once a year to receive a complete checkup and monitor my heart's condition because it had been that way for a few years. Life with a genetic cardiac condition is like that. You won't hear me whining, though. In 2020, Arnold underwent an aortic valve replacement in Cleveland, Ohio, in addition to having a new pulmonary valve installed in April 2018 in Los Angeles. He had an elective cardiac surgery in 1997 to repair a congenitally faulty aortic heart valve. It can impede blood flow and make the heart work harder to pump blood to the rest of the body when the aortic valve is malfunctioning. Aortic valve replacement and repair are treatments that address disorders affecting the aortic valve, one of the four valves that regulate blood flow through the heart, according to WebMD. According to the website, the aortic valve aids in maintaining blood flow through the heart in the proper direction. According to WebMD, it also divides the aorta, the major artery that carries oxygen-rich blood throughout your body, from the left ventricle, the heart's primary pumping chamber. Arnold expressed his gratitude by saying, the bicuspid valves in my mother and her mother killed them. In 1998, his mother Aurelia passed away. I'm still here thanks to advancements in medicine and my strict adherence to seeing and hearing from my doctors. My mother declined to have the procedure to replace her valve. However, at the time, open heart was the only choice. These days, non-invasive techniques are used to replace valves, and you can return home the same day. The first time I had valve replacement surgery was in 1997, and it involved open heart surgery. Both valves, they informed me, should last 12 to 15 years. When I went in for a replacement in 2018, the non-invasive alternative was accessible thanks to Dr. Starn's excellent work and their 21-year success rate, you are aware, of course, of the minor mishap that occurred at the Los Angeles hospital, which turned my non-invasive procedure into an open-heart procedure. Here in this newsletter, I presented the narrative and some videos.
They replaced only one of the two valves, so I went to the Cleveland Clinic in 2020 and replaced the other one, he continued. The non-invasive transcatheter valve replacement procedure was successful this time, however, my doctors informed me that it was more crucial than ever to monitor my condition after all of those surgeries, so I checked in frequently and sent data about my heart rate from home. We were aware of the abnormal heartbeat, and my amazing team kept a close eye on it, they assured me that they would notify me when a pacemaker was necessary. On my way to the Arnold Sports Festival in early March, I stopped in for my routine examination, and they performed a comprehensive battery of tests. I was speaking with one of my closest friends when I arrived home in Los Angeles, as if by fate they informed me that they had a pacemaker inserted, recovered quickly, and were now back to their normal energy levels. One thing you discover about an irregular heartbeat is that it exhausts you due to the additional work your heart must do, man, if I'm being completely honest, I had a hard time working 16-hour days at the Arnold Sports Festivals in the US at the beginning of March and in the UK last week. Seeing as many sports as I could and navigating the throngs of thousands of fitness enthusiasts. On the day that I spoke with my friend, I received a call from one of my doctors informing me that it was time to move forward with filming FUBAR Season 2, having reviewed all of my data and results and knowing that I had six weeks to prepare. According to the doctors, this was the ideal approach to fulfill their desire for many more seasons of FUBAR, I informed them that we would make the trip to Cleveland when I returned from the UK. I went under on Monday to have my new machine part put.as I mentioned before, by Friday I was working in the field as usual, and no one seemed to know anything. I'm unable to work out seriously right now, but I'll be prepared for FUBAR in a heartbeat next month, I could have concealed it. But as far as I'm aware, we've surpassed 750,000 subscribers, really, we've reached 775,000, the village has grown into a metropolis, and many of you are undoubtedly juggling personal health issues. I want you to know that you're not by yourself. And if you're delaying something because you're afraid, I hope this encourages you to follow your doctor's advice and look after yourself. We can be open and honest in this village because it's hard to be genuinely positive when everything is bottled up. That is the main goal of Arnold's Pump Club. None of US can raise certain weights by themselves, but when we band together, we can lift anything and anything. Here, you are never by yourself.